It's Fermentation Friday and today we're going to do something different. We are going to answer a question, a question from an actual person. Okay, before we go there, if you don't know me, my name is Nadia and I love everything about fermentation, cultured foods and beverages, non-alcoholic of course, we are going for the probiotic. If you want to see a fermentation video or cultured food video, beverage video every Friday, please subscribe and click that bell button. So let's go over to the question. It's from Evan or Evie. My milky fur had a pinkish almost salmon color on the top, fairly even and smelled very yeasty. I did leave it on my kitchen table covered with a coffee filter held in place by a rubber band for 10 or 11 days. My apartment is very cool between 64 and 72 degrees, usually closer to 64. When I strained it, it separated and the whey went through the strainer but the kefir stayed in until I moved it around with a plastic spoon. That's a classic sign of over-fermentation. Over okay? It was slimy too. I cleaned it off with, a f with fresh milk and started another batch. Very good for cleaning it off with fresh milk. That's a great first aid thing that you can do for your kefir grains if they are too slimy. It's also an indication of yeast overgrowth, which is um, uh, reiterated by the yeasty smell or confirmed by the yeasty smell. So, um, yes, you clean it off with mold, tossing out the off color one, which is a brilliant choice. Do you have any thoughts or should I throw out the grains? Okay. <sighs> A lot of thoughts streamed into my mind and I had a lot of answers to this uncertainty or this question. So about the kefir grains, I've learned that any color, pink, green, blue, black and sometimes yellow, is all bad signs. It's signs of mold. Okay, so I'm quite um, anxious when I see different colors appearing. Um, it did happen once with one of my kombucha scobies. I let it dry out so it started forming a fuzziness on top but that's a story for another time. So when I see things like that happening I try to get it away from our other cultures as soon as possible. I don't want it to cross contaminate or even get the slightest chance to do that. So I'm quite paranoid when it gets to that. Um, some people won't have a problem with just removing a part of the culture and continue with brewing their whatever they are brewing. Um, even Sandor Katz, we, he's a master fermenter and he also suggests that it's fine to take a part of it, the unspoiled part of the culture and just continue with what you are doing with. Okay, so that's it about the color, the slimy grains and yeasty smell. It's just a confirmation that, uh, that there's an imbalance with your bacteria and yeast. So normally when you over ferment your kefir or you leave it for long periods of time, you can bump into a bacteria and yeast imbalance. Um, yeasty brews are usually very liquidy. Okay, if you let it over ferment, obviously it will separate and you will have a solid piece of kefir with the whey as you had now. So I think 10 to 11 days at 64 degrees Fahrenheit, it's a little bit long. You can leave it in your fridge if you have a problem with too much kefir. Rather put it in the fridge for 10 or 11 days and... Um, then you, uh, you'll you have a slower ferment, a thicker type of a kefir, a kefir and less chances of it separating like that. And over fermentation really puts a lot of strain on your grains. So I'd suggest to feed your grains regularly, a good indication of your grains needing to be fed is that if you see small whey pockets forming in your kefir jar, while fermenting, then it's usually time for you to add new milk and strain your kefir. Feed your kefir grains regularly to stop this or to prevent this from happening. If you want to make sure that your grains are happy, you can monitor your grain growth and also your fermentation time. 
and um, even after uh, removing the pink grain see how your grain growth continues and how does your ferment end up being providing that you're using shorter fermentation times um, but I'd still rather suggest that you get a new culture I would love to know what happened what happened after you removed the grain did you continue with the same culture what's happening now and also if you have questions please send me pictures with because a picture is worth a thousand words this is what happens when you make your milk kefir you add your grains to the milk and the microbes in the grains actually start to break down the sugar in the milk the lactose and then you get a byproduct one of the byproducts is lactic acid now the lactic acid acid causes the ferment to lower in ph now that lower ph actually keeps the pathogens away okay and I guess my guess is that you might have used too much milk with too little grains um, or maybe too much milk too low temperature and a little bit of grains or too little grains for the ratios and that have created a perfect window for pathogen to grab hold on your culture Okay, now it's your turn. Tell me what you think. Tell me if you think that I could be right. Um, have you had different colors? Have you ever had different colors in your ferment? And uh, what did you do? What was the outcome? And what would you suggest? Comment, comment below. It's here for you to say something. I want you to be part of this community. I want to chat with you. We have to talk to each other. You can also join my Natural Green Facebook group. I'll add the link below. Have a lovely day and see you next Friday. Ooh. Every Friday is Fermentation Friday. Go ahead, click that subscribe button and that bell button so that you don't miss out on any of the new videos that gets released. If you have a friend or family member that might benefit from any of my videos, please go ahead and share it. Any comments, anything you want to share with me, make use of the comment section below. Have a lovely day and thank you for watching.